Thomas Isidore Newell Sankara was a military officer from Burkina Faso, a revisionary leader, and a pan-Africanist and Marxism-Leninist who changed the course of history in his country, Burkina Faso. He was known as the African Che Guevara for his charismatic leadership and his commitment to social justice, equality, and self-reliance. Sankara's leadership was characterized by a strong focus on the empowerment of the people. He believed that the best way to achieve this was through education and mobilization. He launched numerous initiatives aimed at improving the lives of ordinary people, including a campaign to vaccinate over 2 million children against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles. He also launched a campaign to plant over 10 million trees to combat desertification. However, Sankara's efforts to bring about change were not without opposition. He was also criticized because of the links he had with the Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Sankara's legacy continues to inspire people across the world. He remains a symbol of hope and courage, and his ideas continue to be relevant and applicable even today. In today's video, we will explore the life and story of Thomas Sankara and examine his impact on the political and economic landscape of Burkina Faso. Don't go anywhere, make sure you watch this video to the end. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Sankara's Early Life and Education Thomas Sankara was born on December 21, 1949, in Yako, Burkina Faso. His parents are Joseph and Margaret Sankara. His father was a soldier in the French army and was of mixed Masi Fulani ancestry, while his mother, Marguerite Kinda, was of pure Masi lineage. His father was stationed as an auxiliary gendarme in the southwest village of Gawa, where he spent his formative years. He had a comparatively privileged upbringing as the son of one of the few African functionaries then working for the colonial state. The family shared a brick home at the top of a hill with the families of other gendarmes. Despite his humble origins, Sankara was an exceptional student. He attended primary school at Bobo di Lasso, and he showed a strong interest in politics and social justice from a young age. Sankara continued his early education in Burkina Faso. Although his parents intended for him to become a priest, he decided to join the military instead. Sankara was going to receive a scholarship if he was accepted into the military academy. He took the test and did well. Let's take a look at his military career. At the age of 17, he enrolled in the Kadiogo Military Academy in Ouagadougou as part of the school's initial intake. While there, he saw the Upper Volta's first military coup d'etat on January 3, 1966, which was conducted by Lieutenant Colonel Sangule Lamazana. Their academic director at that time was Adama Toure, a history and geography teacher who was also recognized for holding progressive opinions even though he kept them to himself. He invited a few of his most intelligent and politically engaged students, including Sankara, to participate in casual conversations outside of the classroom about neocolonialism, socialism, communism, the African liberation movements, and related topics. Sankara was systematically exposed to a revolutionary viewpoint on Upper Volta and the rest of the world for the first time during this period. During this time, he fell in love with music and played guitar fairly well. Sankara, then 20 years old, enrolled in additional military training at the Ansarib Military Academy in Madagascar in 1970. He graduated from there as a junior officer in 1973. While in Madagascar for training, he watched the upheavals against Philibert Serenana's government in 1971 and 1972 and read his first works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, which had a significant impact on his political ideas for the rest of his life. Sankara was able to study agriculture at the Ansarib Academy because the curriculum there went beyond just traditional military instruction. He later applied what he learned to improve farmer livelihoods and crop yields in his administration and nation. He read extensively about the history and military tactics during this time, picking up the ideas and analytical skills he would eventually use for his reinterpretation of Burkina Faso's political history. He returned to Upper Volta in 1972, and by 1974, he had participated in fighting along the country's border with Mali. 
Although he became famous for his actions during the battle, he later declared the combat to be useless and wrong, reflecting his developing political awareness. Sankara continued his love for music and played the guitar in addition to his academic pursuits and extracurricular political activity. He was a member of the Tout Aku Jazz Band and a cyclist. He later went to France to study military science, and it was during this time that he became involved in revolutionary politics. He returned to Burkina Faso after completing his studies and quickly rose through the ranks and became Minister of Information on September 1981 in Sey Zervo's military government. Sankara set himself apart from other government employees in several ways, such as by riding his bike to work every day rather than taking a car. Unlike his predecessors, who would restrict newspapers and journalists, Sankara supported investigative reporting and permitted the media to publish anything it discovered. On April 12, 1982, he announced his resignation in protest of the regime's perceived anti-labor slant, saying, misfortune to those who gag the people. Sankara was later appointed Prime Minister on January 1983 by the newly formed Council for the Salvation of the People. He was a trusted advisor to the president and a natural leader, and he quickly gained a reputation for his charisma, his intelligence, and his unwavering commitment to justice and equality. His anti-imperialist stance and grassroots popularity put him at odds with conservative elements within the council, including President Odrago. He was then removed as prime minister on May 17. The decision to detain Sankara proved to be exceedingly unpopular, with the younger military officers, and his confinement gave his comrade Blaise Compaoré the impetus he needed to conduct another coup, and this ultimately led to his rise to power. Are you enjoying this video? Let us know by subscribing to the new Tourist channel. Also, turn on the notifications so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video on fun facts about Africa and the world at large. Let's continue. 1983 Coup and Sankara's Rise to Power A coup d'etat organized by Blaise Compaoré made Sankara president on August 4, 1983, at the age of 33. The coup was supported by Libya, which was at the time on the verge of war with France and Chad. Sankara viewed himself as a revolutionary and took inspiration from figures like Jerry Rawlings, the military dictator of Ghana, Cuba's Fidel Castro, and Che Guevara. Thomas Sankara, upon seizing power, immediately sold off the government's fleet of Mercedes cars, replacing them with the ordinary Renault 5, which was then the cheapest car in Burkina Faso. He changed the name of the country from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means land of honest men. He went ahead to change the flag and the national anthem. Sankara reduced the salary of all public servants, including his which was $450 per month. He limited his possessions to a car, a few bikes, guitars, a refrigerator, and a broken freezer. Sankara supported the democratic and popular revolution while serving as president. His policies were focused on boosting forestry and combating corruption. Despite his success, Sankara was never contented with their situation, and he was always pushing for change. He saw the military as a tool for bringing about positive change, and he used his position to mobilize the people and fight for their rights. After taking office, Sankara's top responsibilities were to feed, house, and provide his people with the critical medical treatment they required. Sankara started a widespread immunization campaign to combat polio, meningitis, and measles. More than 2 million Burkinabes received vaccinations between 1983 and 1985. Infant mortality in Burkina Faso was roughly 20% before Sankara became president. During his term, it decreased to 14%. Brick factories were also established to help with house construction and also to put an end to urban slums. This made infrastructure and housing developments take another step in Burkina Faso. Sankara also established the Popular Revolutionary Tribunal, a court system, not long after coming to power. The tribunals were initially established enabling a typical Burkinabe to take part in or supervise trials of revolutionaries' adversaries. The people first praised the courts, but over time they turned into corrupt and authoritarian institutions. 
Some people even established their courts to settle disputes and humiliate their adversaries. Sankara's Assassination Thomas Sankara was assassinated on October 15, 1987, in a military coup d'etat. He was 37 years old at the time of his death. The circumstances surrounding his death remain shrouded in mystery and speculation, and there have been many different theories as to who was responsible. The official story is that he was killed in the course of a power struggle within the military, and that he was killed by his close associate and friend, Blaise Compaoré. Compaoré was later installed as the new president of Burkina Faso, and he went on to rule the country for 27 years. Many believe that Sankara's death was part of a larger conspiracy, and that it was orchestrated by powerful interests, both within Burkina Faso and abroad. Some have pointed to France, Burkina Faso's former colonial ruler, as being involved in the plot to kill Sankara, as he was seen as a threat to their interests in the region. France was responsible for killing many African revolutionaries, including the likes of Patrice Lumumba. We have a video on our channel on African leaders who were assassinated. You can find the link in the description below. The lone survivor of Sankara's murder, Haluma Traoré, claimed that Sankara was present at a meeting with the Kansi de l'Entente when he was killed. Sankara was the target of his killers. Sankara's death was a turning point in the history of Burkina Faso, and it marked the end of an era. He had been a charismatic and visionary leader who was deeply loved and respected by the people. Thomas Sankara's life and legacy serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of leadership that is guided by compassion, justice, and the will to make a positive difference in the world. He was a man of the people who dedicated his life to improving the lives of the poor and marginalized, and his vision for a better Burkina Faso inspired a generation. Despite the many questions that still surround his death, Thomas Sankara remains an inspiration for those who believe in a better world and the power of the people to bring about change. A modern-day African leader who embodies the spirit of Thomas Sankara is President Julius Mata Bio of Sierra Leone. Like Sankara, President Bio is a charismatic and visionary leader who is committed to reducing poverty and improving the lives of the people. He has implemented a range of policies aimed at reducing corruption, creating jobs, and improving access to education and healthcare. True leadership is about putting the needs of the people first and working tirelessly to create a better world. Whether we are inspired by Thomas Sankara or any other leader who is making positive change, we must always remember that the struggle for a better world requires courage, determination, and a commitment to justice and equality. Okay, guys, we've come to the end of the video. What do you think about the story of Thomas Sankara? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in knowing some important history about Africa, then subscribe to the new tourist channel. Also turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload new educational content like this. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.